um, move forward into the next block, which is our international perspective on waste management and urban metabolism. The theme of the seminar is waste management. And the, uh, the reason we choose this theme is because waste management is more and more um, attention in China, and uh, international as well. If you haven't heard about the, the, the waste separation that's happening in Shanghai, and also China is not accepting the waste from the, the other countries, so those are bringing a lot of changes. So first we want to talk about you know, what are our international experience on um, waste management. In this block we have two speakers. First, I want to introduce uh, Mariakali Fus, um, who is a uh, um, uh, Brazilian, but now they say in German. I learned that during the exercise we just had. So she's a chemist and uh, um, energy and material flow assessment specialist. She has been involved in many different projects, including water and waste water treatment and waste to power generation in Brazil. Since 2012, she has been a scientist staff of the research field Energy Source, uh, Energy Resource Technology Systems of the Institute of Technology Assessment and the System Analysis of KIT. Okay. Welcome. First of all, do you hear my voice? <laughs> okay, it's all fine because I'm the one that I don't like to use so much microphones. So I'll try to speak louder. If I get quiet, please just end. Uh, secondly, I'll just say thank you very much, Paul, for the invitation. It was great just to get in touch with me and invite me to be here to kind of present our study case. And secondly, I'll just say, okay, we are working with waste management in Brazil. We are talking about okay, how we can improve, how we can uh, tell them about sustainability, and how we can also discuss with industry regarding circular economy. So this is such a huge uh, approach where we are in Europe quite familiar, but when we are coming back to Brazil, it's like playing different pieces of the puzzles. So this is a kind of a challenge when we are just coming back and tell them, okay, we need to take parts of this puzzle, bring them together, if you want to work for art, we get regard to single development, regard to single economy. So this is the approach, more or less what we are working since five years, let's say. Uh, it's also part of uh, my uh, PhD uh, doctorate. And then let's come in and tell what we are doing here. Uh, how Paul said we are talking with different technologies, First of all, I was surprised when I come, just was reading a little bit about over metabolism. I was like, well, this has something regarding what I'm doing. So I was really like, okay, interesting. Now to come with a new technology like system CD metabolism. So let's go back. Uh, first, I will give what I'm going to present today and kind of introduction how we are doing. I said Belo Resort. Why Belo Resort? Where is Belo Resort, for example? Um, and then the third, let's say, what we are building up a concept of sustainability together with them. Uh, so let's give some tips how is our fun, uh, finds, what we are achieving with the policy makers, what we are achieving with the people, just a little bit uh, showing up some results and some conclusions that we are taking now. How I start to say, uh, circular economy is a new strategy that's already not in Europe. <laughs> So they are looking for industry development, they are looking for national development, national development. And then when we are coming back to uh, energy economy comes from like Brazil, it's like a concept that is familiar for industries, because for them they are also all the time looking for, okay, we need to achieve a circular economy strategy because we also want to achieve an international market. So for the industries they say, okay, we, are, we really need to focus because we want to get the international market. So we want to sell a product internationally, so we need to follow that. But, and then another side is, okay, for the packaging industries, they say we need to feel, but when we come back and say, how is our waste management here? And then they are saying, we are still on the end of the pipe, just meaning like, we have our disposal in space of the landfill, and how it can just bring back and tell, okay, we are also providing the circular economy. So this is a kind of how I start to say, it's play puzzles, but not to really build it. So and then in this session, I just okay, how is the core idea that we are talking? We are first of all just say, okay, how we can talk about uh, economy, how we can talk about the concept of sustainability, 
Because at our institute, we are based uh, in Germany, they have a concept of sustainability that is trying to see how we can spread them, how we can also talk about different questions regarding sustainability, when we apply, to say, how we can apply sustainability. So, and then also how we can include society. Because when I'm coming to Brazil, uh, I'm not talking worldwide, just take about Brazil as an example, but we can also figure out this is called worldwide. We have way speakers. So people that are on the streets are speaking the ways for their own survival. And in Brazil, we have since 2010 a policy that municipalities must, must, must include way speakers in their voice So since 2010, they need to look for how to include the society. Because like way speakers is the society. So the society is trying to, they are not in the grip of the idea. They are trying to pick in the waste, send the waste, and provide a kind of a informal signal, what I call it, let's say. And now the approach of many of research is how to make this feasible and say like, are they really providing circular economy and how this can be done? Uh, so the approach now, let's try to say how we can properly understand waste flows, how we can properly understand recycling, and how we can understand principles of sustainability in an energy economy countries, taking the example of the research. But what is this Belo Horizonte? <laughs> Belo Horizonte is a city located in southeast of Brazil, <coughs> on the states of Minas Gerais. It's considered the fourth uh, important city of Brazil the, and one of the most important in Latin America. It is a, it's a business city. It's also considered one of the important cities on the mining sector because they have steel, they have iron, even the past gold. So it's one of the most important cities regarding mining in Brazil. This, when it comes to the name of Minas Gerais, this means of a state of mining. So Belo Horizonte is the capital of this state. So they say, compared to Virginia, it's nothing. <laughs> so it's just 331 square kilometers. Uh, the city at all is just, just when I compare it with Beijing, 2.4 million inhabitants. But it's part of the metropolitan region which comes across to 5 million hectares. So the population growth more nowadays is not that high, almost nothing, so it's growing around 0.61%. But on another side, we say, okay, the city has a high social inequality. And also high social income inequalities. From the solid waste management, uh, we have, I just took this up as an example, but we have searched how this has grown according to the years. Uh, 0.784 kilogram per capita. A collection coverage is 96%, but recycling comes just to 2%. So untreated waste comes to 98%. So how I start to say, this city has a really high social inequality. Where I just put some uh, sentence of a quality that we are searching together. Uh, Belo Horizonte has 487 districts. Uh, just in a comparison, the city that are indexed at the same city, you find 0.62, which is like compared to India, and the other side is 0.95 hours compared to Finland. So when you are just in the street, you just look on one side and you see luxurious, really high luxurious house, and you look on the other side and you see poverty. Really high poverty. So it's Really, when it's are there, you look say, oh, I'm too worried. So on one side, you see like a house that is standing there with a thousand square meter, and the other side, you see 30 houses at the same area. And then you look and say, well, how this comes? And how can you work on that? And then another side, we have uh, Belarus, also known uh, worldwide as a social integrated model. Because how I start to say they have voice speakers, and since 1990s they are fighting to be recognized, to tell to the whole society, hey, we are here, we need the help of the society for our own so to meet our own survival. So they are not, how I said, since uh, 1990s they are fighting, then since 2010 they start to be recognized internationally, being also part of several studies, just looking about. Uh, and then how this is coming up. They started with a group of people uh, with the support of the church. 
to tell them just say, okay, you want to provide the work, but if you do this together, we get more profit. It's more profitable for everybody. So and then they start to organize by themselves and meet some groups and also talk with the city and tell to the city like, hey, we can support you. But the problem, because the city is not trusting them, because they come with really low level of income, they are not having the awareness that all the time the posts are waiting for. And then this comes a break and say like, okay, that is no trust, but now since 2010 we, have, we must include them because now it's a national policy. But nowadays, how they are placed? But on the social, shall I say, they have uh, today eight uh, wave speakers cooperatives, but now in our study we got to quantify them, to, to say, okay, how many they are? So this is part of uh, my work that is on that. And also, they are also not more organized than cooperatives, but network. So, which means that they are also trying to uh, cooperate outside of Belo Horizonte, in a sense that now they have a network that the nation recognizes. They say, like, this is a work that has been done. They also support it. But how about come to the research case? Well, this was a, this showing up. This is a, a research that's a applied science. It's more problem solver oriented where we are looking for resource management combined with social science because we need to understand how this is working in society. And the outcome is our outcome is guidance, provide awareness, and our competence is also communication skills. Because like since we are talking with all from way speakers to policy, this is a different level of skills that we do all the time, try to understand them first of all. And provide <coughs> awareness and flexibility. And which kind of tools we are modeling software we are I show later. now the search uh, we start with the concept of sustainability. Uh, it's called Integrative Concept of Sustainability Icons, which is placed, sponsored was started in our institution since 2001, and now I was the first one to apply internationally because it's mostly not just German based. Uh, and then since then, we start first to understand how we can adapt, how we can understand, and I'll show you later on. And after, which are the two that we are working with material flow analysis, because it's the one that we quantify, that we show that, okay, this is happening. It's also showing also like who are here, which kind of technology is there technology is not, and how we can play the scenarios also to tell them what can come up. This is the approach that we are looking for material for analysis. And also we are working with uh, uh, social agency uh, analysis, structure agent analysis, which means that we are also looking for the agents, stakeholders, and what are the approach and how we are, can come together with them. And everything will come as an interpretation at the end. Now I show step by step. First, we start with the material flow analysis, just, just an example. If you have more questions later on, you can just come to my side and not go so much in detail or that now. Uh, we start to quantify what is there, who is there, and which kind of technologies are there, which I also consider like the way speakers operatives, we also part of the technology. So I need to know like okay, how many there are there what is coming in, what's coming out, and also considering also the consumption side, and we also adapt input of the tables to know what is coming in from outside, and that we say, okay, how we can look for coming back to the circular approach. So and then uh, we are based on the uh, product, which means that like we are looking which kind of platforms are there, because the waste figures, they are the one that are provide uh, product base, a product like okay, we are separate plastic, not just plastic at all, we are separate products. So we are separate quality layer, we have separate a uh, hard keys of everything. So they are really based with really such detail because they are looking for where the companies that they can operate. So, and then what we are doing, we are also working with the software stand, which brings us this approach to show up how is the input goods. And also look for the uncertainties. In a sense that we are also working on research, we also want to publish, of course. 
Uh, and now let's look for the agent analysis, structure agent analysis, which I start to say, okay, who are they? Because it's also like everybody's working, but no one's, how I say, communicating with each other. This is the main challenge. There is a communication of local authorities with the private sector, because the private sector is providing the service of transportation or providing the service of take all, like, uh, how I showed before, 96% is collect. This is a really great number for Brazil. So they are communicating with the private sector, but the private sector, in this case, when they are holding the service, they also communicate with the waste cooperatives, which means like they take this, uh, the waste from the city and deliver to the waste cooperatives. But the waste cooperatives are also provide door-to-door -door collection. So this is also another communication. And they are the one that also provide communication with the citizens. Because how I said, they are making door to door, they just knock to door and say like, please, can you just provide me this specific material? They are also teach. This is another perspective that so they are teaching the society how to separate. Because they say like, if you separate this, I get the money, I get the value. Because I need to pay all the time, tell their resources. But in another way, who are supporting also these waste cooperatives? First, we have the NGOs. They are the ones that support, support a lot, the waste speakers. They also provide awareness and also provide their conditions to tell them, OK, now we need new sheds, so new working places. Now we need this machinery. Because they start really from the, uh, how I can tell you, basic separation, just taking, OK, with the hand. And nowadays, most support of the NGOs, they also tell them, OK, if you have a bell, in the beginning it was really hard to, for the five minutes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I will run half. Sorry. <laughs> and then they also providing uh, together with uh, public agencies, which is support with uh, funds, and also they have some other donor agencies. So just some pictures that you can show who are those people on the streets. We start with those that are the cooperatives. They have the transport systems. We also have the others one that are informed, which they are not on the cooperatives. So they are living on the streets. They are also looking for, okay, how I, this is also another approach that we did to talk with them why they are not on the cooperatives. What's their reason? So this is part of our research. And we can show the concept of sustainability just to tell, okay, first, what is this concept? We start with the capability approach to tell them, like, okay, what is acting here? It's something that can be also part of sustainability. It should not just start from zero, from the start. Just look what we are doing and understand first. And this was also done there together with 34 different stakeholders. We also made a, a workshop with them to understand this approach, what we are doing. And then we just came, okay, so first, what the concept provides for us, we should think about to improve the quality of life, because it's one of the most aspects of this concept. To think about, we should be a society, we should improve the quality of life we are living there. We should also prove the capacity of them to take active life, and also to look for the present and future generation, as the concept of really stands for, and also to look for what they are doing has also a global orientation, which means like waste is a global problem, as everybody knows. So, and then we start to compare action versus quality of life and versus further development. And this was a, a workshop that we did that we asked them, asked the study for people that we got to come bring them together what is to sustain, why it should be sustained, and who is concerned. This was a three main question that we came and discussed and worked with them in a sense to improve and build up our own perception of sustainability. That is what they answered for us. And based on that, we just bring up uh, the constitutive element, constitutive elements of the sustainability, which is based on this concept. First, we should secure the human life. We should bring, how I said, actions, maintain society acting, and also preserve the culture. Because like, we cannot just come with a technology, because for the place, we are really afraid just to say, okay, Let's just bring ways to uh, ways to power, and then say, what is the society? They are really afraid to just say, uh, come with uh, incineration, and they don't have more power or 
to meet the, to take it away and provide recycling. So this was a concept that we are working with them. I just, if you have more questions, please just come to me. This is very well because of my five minutes. And we built up a kind of a diagram based on three goals, the security of existence, maintaining the action of the society, and also provide the protection of the culture. Uh, and with a global orientation. And uh, this one also has 15 different roles that we discuss each role with them. And we build up also some criteria, which is based, okay, this first criteria is based on the uh, white speaker, this first or second criteria is based on recycling, and so on. We build up different approaches, and we have 18 different indicators. So we make a diagram. This diagram is a same quantitative diagram, where we are able to ask all the time they say, what is the situation? And they just give us to, uh, the distance to target. Okay, we achieve this percent, we achieve that, and at the end we can quantify and tell them the information. It's a kind of a simple tool, but I see that it's hard to understand. We understand with the policy, we understand also the way speakers, when you talk different ones with them, they say, okay, so now I understand what I'm doing. And then just coming kind of, now, almost to end, what we come to for the material flow analysis. Uh, we just based, okay, from product base, aluminum cans and also non ferrous composition products, polyethylene bottles, they are, and cardboard, they are some of the commodities that achieve the close loop recycle, which means like from the consumption return to the industry, the product the waste figures are doing, they are just taking. Why? Because the industry is also motivating and have some work. A cooperation with them and tell them, okay, this is this material we want, and then they also provide the market itself higher for the products. So this is the main life of these three, four products. It's really returning. So we have a close goal. Uh, but on another side, waste. Since ten years, we are like looking for ten years approach has increased a lot. So by sixty-five percent, if you just compare. To and also, we can just come to say, okay, who are really doing this? How I said before, this is with speakers that they are providing the service, that's not on the uh, approach. From the agency, uh, agent structure analysis, we just uh, come as a result to some uh, challenges that we identified. First is the culture value. But why I say culture value? They started with a social way speakers approach. They start to integrate with each other, they have a community. But the problem is there are a lot of formal way speakers that they do not want to be integrated. Because they say like if I'm free, I don't need to speak like it's a kind of a uh, they are afraid to share their work with the others and this is not part of the cooperative. So this is also an approach that we identify as a challenge for all those that are on the streets that they say like we really do not want. And also for the market mechanism, this is uh, also a challenge in regard because you have just these four products high market value and all the others not. So, and also we say from the legislation approach, we are also identified that like from the Brazilian legislation, just these four products are allowed to go back to recycle. All the others not. Because of contamination, because of many, many reasons. So from the legislation is also a challenge. Because if you want to achieve the international market, the legislation stands for primary resource. Uh, and from the sustainability assessment, based on this diagram, if you have more questions, I really can show you later on. Uh, we made a kind of a research and also interview with them. They achieved from all these roles and features just 30% uh, according to our definition of sustainability. And one of the advantages that we identified that like when they are cooperatives, child labor is avoided. This is really an advantage, it's a role of them. So coming to the end, so conclusion remark, when we are talking about these three aspects, we are guaranteeing uh, how I start to say child labor, no child labor, just women, okay, fair income, continent. Uh, because it states that when they are the cooperatives, they are also sure that they get at least the minimum salary. And they have other public uh, efforts to keep there. Also, the advantage of such 
idea of corporate for, uh, discussing social integration, civil economy, and sustainability is to direct to different stakeholders, decision makers. And with this idea of this diagram, when we are coming back, when I come back to Brazil, try to talk with them, I see that they start to understand because we start to talk with the language of them. And if we want to look for how to uh, adapt this construct to other energy countries, first of all, we should recognize waste is a problem. This was one of the advantages that we identified in Brazil. This was already recognized and came to the policy. And then so this is, was a policy. They say, okay, we identified waste is a problem, and let's go forward. 